Hello, good evening, and welcome back. So just a short one, um, and it's about Ebola. You might have thought Ebola was finished a few years ago, but no, it's come back again. And the issue now is as it gets into more urban areas, and with the Doctors Without Borders being a bit concerned about their own welfare, with three of the Doctors already contracting Ebola, two of which were vaccinated. So it shows you the uh, <laughs> effect of which the vaccination happens. Um, it's got a 50% survival rate, at which point you're okay to continue living. And it was only stopped the last time as there was a mutation, as it is a, um, a very mutational um, pathogen that was asymptomatic, meaning the people who were then, uh, who then contracted Ebola did not show any symptoms of it. And then that stopped its spread and it seemed to die down. However, now, seeing as it's getting into more urban populated areas as soon as it gets to airports and any globally connected areas or even ports and seaports then it's going to go global and some would say well that's mother nature trying to say hey humans you've done enough you've damaged the earth it's about time that we cold you down again like with the bubonic plague which is of course resurfacing in san francisco due to their high homeless rates there but not only have we got Ebola there, we've also got measles. So from The Guardian, measles vaccination begins in Ebola hit Congo amid fears of massive loss of life. And this is from The Guardian earlier today. Okay, not quite. <laughs> 12th of July, 7 British summertime. Delhi measles outbreak claims almost 2,000 lives, compounding strain on health system already reeling from Ebola. Children await measles vaccinations. <laughs> what about the autism? Oh, it's not a thing. Okay. Um, at the Dunyeka Health Center on the first day of the inoculation campaign in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Health workers in the Congo have launched an urgent measles vaccination campaign in Ebola hit regions after almost 2,000 deaths from the preventable disease, two thirds of them among children under five. And it's always the infants and the elderly who are most sensitive or vulnerable to these diseases. At least 1,982,000 people died from measles in the Congo this year, surpassing the 1,641 deaths from Ebola, according to the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF. The unprecedented humanitarian crisis is putting the health system under strain, United Nations staff said. And this is one of those things that they have the, the doctors, the health workers there, and they would like to have them protected by guards, because when you have these countries that are so low on funds, people would happily raid the hospitals in order to obtain the medicine to then sell them on the black market, or however they can get money from them, in order to then have enough sustenance in order to live. And therefore the doctors are saying, well, in that case we would like some soldiers with us, so that we don't fear for our lives when people come in trying to steal from us. To which the responses are, ah, well then you're making the, the native people very nervous, and they're not going to be willing to come forward, thinking, well, okay, that's their problem. <laughs> hmm. Maybe get get the message out, seeing as witch doctors are still very much a thing in the continent of Africa. The UN staff said, The combined threat of Ebola and measles for the thousands of families living in overcrowded and unsanitary displacement camps is unprecedented. And they say overcrowded. And that's the thought that when the Europeans headed to America, for the first time, okay, after the Vikings. They then spread diseases, even though they didn't understand how diseases worked, because, especially in England, we'd been living in cities for so long that we had been spreading those diseases so readily, whereas in America, they did not live so closely, so they were not spreading the diseases so readily. Uh, we have a small window to prevent a potentially massive loss of life, and of course, the, option, the, the, the problem is with, with any of these. Um, curable diseases or preventable diseases, diseases like polio that we think we've pretty much gone rid of, smallpox as well. We got to kind of a remote island which we think, mm, no, because then somebody else could weaponize it and we won't have any cures for it. it. It's a similar thing and it's just as well considering it's making a comeback that at least we have some sort of cures, or better yet, vaccination. Vaccination is better than the cure. Nearly 115,000 cases of suspected measles have been reported for the six months to 2013, almost double the number recorded for the whole of 2018, so it seems to be quadrupling. 
Cases of measles have accelerated in Itui in the past year, mainly due to fighting and mass displacement, said Jerome Fraffman, a unit of health specialist based in Vinia, a town in the northeast province. That's very specific. People go into camps which are overcrowded and unsanitary. With the Ebola outbreak, it puts the health system under a strain and poses a major challenge for government health officials and partners. And that's one of those things that you might be against foreign aid, but when is it pragmatic to then help out a different country? because you're worried about the effect it will have on your own country, or maybe even your trading partners. In that case, it is an indirect effect on your own country and yourself. So they're targeting 67,000 children, which are the centre of the second deadliest Ebola outbreak on record. As of 8th of July, there were 2,500 cases of Ebola, roughly 30% of which were among children, as is to be expected as they are the most vulnerable. Estimated 400,000 people have been displaced. And they've got an additional 250 specially trained staff been mobilised to tackle the outbreak in Vinia. Extra measures were needed to protect workers and patients from Ebola and to screen for it. And these things will keep growing unless it mutates again to an asymptomatic version, but seeing as it is growing now, and it isn't getting a lot of coverage, which is why I thought it worth covering. But let me know what you think below. Do you think, again, it is out of sight, out of mind, we don't need to worry about it? Do you think it is worth this, this time than the last time? Do you think we should worry about it, and what can we actually do about it? other than send people there. Do you think we should set up some big restrictions and say, hey, we're basically going to leave you to die. Um, we can't trust you because you will wait the hospitals. And so you can't cross this zone or you will be shot. Like the uh, border between North and South Korea, that kind of thing. To say, hey, you are in the exclusion zone. You can stay there. It's kind of similar to the project in America in the 60s, I believe it was, when they injected black people with syphilis, told them they had bad blood in order to then monitor the effects of syphilis without giving them a cure. Yes, in, in America, after the Second World War, during the Cold War. And people don't like to talk about that. <laughs> I wonder why. But do let me know what you think in the comments below. I am very intrigued because with something like this that is not what I normally talk about because it is not part of the culture war, it is just humanity against illness essentially, which could be the great uniting factor to bring people together. It seems that whenever there are warring tribes, if there is a bigger threat, then they will team together in order to overcome that, and then get back to fighting each other. And this even happens on a grand scale. For example, the US and the USSR joining together in order to defeat the Nazis, and then they were at war with each other afterwards. Of course, the English, <laughs> we, we sold our engines, our jet engines, to the Russians. We were never paid for it, but we didn't think they were an issue at that time. But anyway, do let me know what you think in the comments below. I am looking forward to it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good evening.